This is a presentation for medical students by Dr. Muntaz Ahmed Umar. The main topic is deep neck space infections and today's topic is peritonsillar abscess. Peritonsillar abscess is also known as Quincy. It is the collection of pus in the peritonsillar space which lies between the capsule of the tonsil and the sphere constrictor muscle. Etiology Peritonsillar abscess usually follows acute tonsillitis, though it may arise de novo without previous history of sore throat. First, one of the tonsillar crypts, usually the crypta magna, it gets infected and sealed off. It forms an intratonsillar abscess, which then bursts through the tonsillar capsule to set up peritonsillitis and then an abscess. Bacteriology the pus aspirate culture shows the growth of streptococcus pyogenes, which is the most common, and followed by Staph aureus and Haemophilus influenza. Anaerobic organisms are also cultured. More often, the growth is of mixed type, containing both the aerobic and anaerobic organisms. Symptoms: It affects adults more than children. Usually, it is unilateral, but can be bilateral. Clinical features are further classified into general and local. General symptoms, it mainly occur due to septicemia. There will be high grade fever up to 104 degree Fahrenheit associated with rigors and chills, general malaise, body ache, headache, nausea and constipation. Local symptoms, there will be severe pain in the throat which is usually unilateral or dinophagia it will be so marked that the patient cannot even swallow his own saliva which dribbles out through the angle of his mouth and patient is usually dehydrated speech is muffled and thick and often called as hot potato voice there will be foul breath due to sepsis in the oral cavity and poor oral hygiene there will be ipsilateral ear ache. This is usually the rapid pain via the cranial nerve 9, which supplies both the tonsils and the ear. Trismus is due to the spasm of the pterygoid muscles, which are in close proximity to the superior constrictor muscle. Signs or the examination findings. The tonsils, pillars, and the soft palate on the involved side are congested and swollen. Tonsils itself may not appear enlarged as it gets buried in the edematous pillars. Uvula is swollen and edematous and pushed to the opposite side. There will be bulging of the soft palate and the anterior pillar above the tonsil. So this is the picture which showing the deviated uvula. This is the uvula and here is the peritonsillar area which is whole swollen up while this uh, protruding mass this is the tonsil this is the peritonsillar abscess of the right side this is the peritonsillar abscess of the left side you see here again the anterior pillar uvula soft palate it's whole swollen up and this small area is the tonsil so mucopus can also be seen covering the tonsillar region there will be cervical lymph adenopathy and this usually involves the jugulodigastric lymph node patient may also have torticollis and the neck is tilted to the affected side. So how will you diagnose such cases? The diagnosis is mainly clinical. On examination when you see these findings which I have just described, so there is a clear cut diagnosis of peritonsillar abscess. But still you will do the blood complete count to look for the neutrophilia culture of the pus is done which is aspirated to see what is the infective organisms and in few rare cases CT scan contrast enhanced or MRI can be done treatment first of all the patient needs to be hospitalized and to counter his dehydration intravenous line and intravenous fluids are given broad spectrum intravenous antibiotics covering both the aerobic and anaerobic and aerobic organisms should be started mainly augmentin is a good antibiotic uh, which is given and is of uh, penicillin group 
analgesics and anti-inflammatory medication were also started which includes paracetamol, NSAIDs and steroids. Special attention needs to be given to the oral hygiene with warm saline gargles or the medicated gargles. So as you all know whenever there is an abscess, abscess is always drained out surgically. So there are still depending upon the size of the abscess if the, ab if the abscess is small needle aspiration can be done. So if you look at this picture you will see the abscess is uh, aspirated, the pus is aspirated from the abscess. If the abscess is of large size then incision and drainage has to be done. So the common practice of incision and drainage is the most bulging area you will incise. But in uh, peritonsillar abscess an imaginary horizontal line is made from the base of the uh, from the base of the uvula and a vertical line is made from the anterior edge of the inferior pillar. Where these two imaginary lines meet you give incision. So the incision is being made by the blade. After incising what you do you pass a straight artery forceps and open up the space and the pus will drain out. Other options can be is the abscess or hot tonsillectomy uh, which can be done in the active case of peritonsillar abscess but there is high risk of rupture of abscess during the anesthesia with excessive bleeding at the time of operation because of the acute infection but some surgeons they have tried this. The other option is the interval tonsillectomy which after this current attack of peritonsillar abscess subside or heal then four to six weeks later you will do tonsillectomy. So complications although the rate of complications is rare with modern therapy but it can lead to if not treated properly or the patient's immunity is low to parapharyngeal abscess there may be edema of the larynx which can in turn give rise to respiratory obstruction and in such patients tracheostomy may be needed to combat the airway obstruction. Then septicemia, pneumonitis or lung abscess, jugular vein thrombosis or spontaneous hemorrhage from the carotid artery or jugular vein has also been reported. So, thank you.